Welcome to the Broccoli Pod. We're your hosts. I'm Augie Dupre. I'm Capital J, and today we're here with our special guest, DJ Bucky Dungan. Yes, right. sir. How long you been a DJ? I think twelve years. Twelve, 12 years. years. Twelve long years. Very long years. Yes. Happy to have you on the podcast. Emphasis. Twelve years. Yes. Yes, sir. Happy to have you on. Yes, sir. So let's get right into the meat of it. What right made me. you? Be- what did you say? What? <laughs> what maybe? Whoa, we were starting at uh, conception. No, no, no. Okay, uh, yeah, conception. Yeah. How are you? My mom and my dad. Actually, hold on. This is ironic. This is funny okay. because my mom and my dad both worked in the nightlife scene, and that's how they oh, met. Oh, okay. So my mom was a cocktail waitress. My dad was a bartender, and that's actually how they met. And then, like my whole upbringing, like I would always like wake up late in the middle of the night because my dad and parents would get home like late from work. So, okay. like, it's, like, literally, like, in my DNA. And that, that like, spawns a DJ. Okay. Yeah, right. exactly. Then all of a sudden, yeah, the, the fucking Pokemon hatches, and then it's a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right on, man. I was just going to ask you next, like, a couple rare why did later? you start being a DJ? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, so through all through high school, I think it, I mean, I love music from, like, a really early age. Like, I want to say I was, like, in... I don't know if you guys, I don't know if this is a weird thing, but like, like how really can you remember being like, this is music? Like just literally as generic of a question as that is, like, this is music. Like just like the like, feeling like you, of this is music? No, no, like, like if you're like, oh, this is food because okay. I'm, I'm a two year old toddler and this is food. Like what age can you remember? Because like for me, it was like, I want to say I was, what grade was it? I had to have been like first grade. It was like. No, wait, what, what? How old would you be? Like nine? You've never 10? heard mu- music before fifth grade, or no, 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 first no, grade? No, first grade, first grade. No, no. But in my brain, I had never been like, oh. oh, cool. Like it never like clicked with me. This is music. Okay. Right. Okay, I get like, that. Like, oh, that this is food. Oh, this is what a house is. Like you're learning things, right? Uh-huh. So the second I learned what music was, like, in I think it was first grade. It would have been. I was born in '88. It was when Coolio came out with um, one, two, three, four. And that was like the first song I heard in my life. And I was like, what is this? I'm like, I was like, Dude, I was like nodding yeah. my head. I was like, you're like, this is music. This is it. Like, yeah. this is it. This is a hit and right then, here. I at can the, tell. Simultaneously, I heard that. And I'm going to fuck it up. But it's um, the Smashing Pumpkins and the Melancholy mm-hmm. Infinite Sadness. is like the dual CD set, like the red and the blue one. And that was like, those were like two very juxt juxta um juxtaposed. what's the word juxtaposed. yeah you like that i was about to use the word yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> Finish word. and uh yeah there are very like different genres of music and it was both things uh, actually it was my cousin who introduced it to me and it was like this is coolio this is hip-hop i fucking love this and then it was like it was like uh, what is this like? You know, like I don't even know what you put Smashing Pumpkins under, or like uh, alternative, alternative rock, or yeah. yeah, whatever. They're not grunge, or maybe they're grunge. I don't know. Uh, okay. But I was like, this is music. I love it. Like these are these two bands I love. And then from there, it never stopped. I just kept listening to more music, more music, more music. And then um, high school hit, and that's when like I started driving. And then that's when I had, oh, yeah. I had two 15s in an expedition oh, in the back, and then I had, and then I blew them, and then I had four 12s because I blew, the, yeah, so I blew the 15s, and then I had, I was like, I took them back, and I was like, yo, I need, I blew my speakers because like I was bumping them too loud. Kicker ain't good enough. Yeah, the kicker ain't slapping like a shit, bro. Give me a <laughs> refund. Give me a refund. And then, uh, so I got the uh, the 12s, and then it was like every day. We went to lunch somewhere. I'd, I'd hit up my friends and be like, yo, we're taking my car for lunch. Like, my car for lunch. Like, we're taking the car. Like, hop in. And that's flaps. And that's when DJing literally manifested for me. Because I was like, I would sit at home and I'm going to... Out, I'm gonna date myself here because I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> age group this podcast is gonna aim for here. But it was uh, it wasn't Napster. It was LimeWire. Yeah. So oh gee. So it was when you had to download the music <laughs> through an illegal thing, and you had to make sure it was a good quality track. Because there's like 30 different tracks of the yeah, same yeah. one, and they all took like. Oh wow! And half of them are all like yeah. malware, corrupt, <laughs> corrupt. You just download corrupt, a, a porn corrupt. video, and you're like, "What? I promise, I didn't try to download this." <laughs> How and did I mom, the computer's Iron broken. Man? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was wild. And so anyways, that's what happened. I, I started making mixtapes of like just songs I love. I'd play them in my car in my system, but I didn't know that's why I like driving my car. Like it was just like yeah. a, you know, like, oh, I like to go to this place in this restaurant. And it's like, you don't know that they serve a certain type of food, but you're actually in love with that food, but you don't know it. You just think you're, you, you know, I just like driving everybody to lunch, but it's like, no, I love showing everybody music. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And then that's where DJing basically started for me was high school. So you just made like a bunch of mixtapes mix and shit like that. You're just, yep, off the rip, just lime wire, mm. just take a pen, a Sharpie to it, like <laughs> try to scribble as many th- song titles inside yeah. of it. And then, Did you give your mixtape names? And then you'd know I'd just run out of room and I'd be like, <laughs> fuck, I'd just be pissed and like throw the pen away and be like, whatever, they won't even know. <laughs> yeah. Every I, time. I know the song. Every time without doubt, I'd just be like, damn it, I ran out of fucking room. Like, <laughs> This, the CD sucks. At least the music's good. Whatever. Um, and then... And these were 8-tracks? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not fucking dinosaur old. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> does, this, does this expedition got a fucking vinyl record player in it? Um, and, then, and then flash forward like to... I don't know what year it would have been. So if it's 2023, it would have been like 2011. And my friend's dad owned a clothing store in LA and he had like a full um, DJ setup for the spot and I they the store went under business and then I bought the full DJ setup not knowing if I knew I would know how to DJ anymore how much was it do you remember I think it was like 1100 bucks in 2011 so whatever that would be today I don't know that's like ten thousand dollars today a <laughs> hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yeah are we talking in yens now what fucking currency are we using yeah, bro who fucking knows anymore how, yeah how many bitcoin is that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's fucking 70 73 thousand dogecoins and then um <laughs> 73 billion dogecoins so i bought a full setup not knowing what i was doing and i had a friend uh my friend morgan rocky at the time who was like just buy it and I'll show you how to do it. He's like, if you want to learn how to do it, like, don't be a pussy, just buy it and I'll teach you. And I was like, okay. Without knowing <laughs> if he even knew how to actually DJ, I just yeah, was like, trusted him. I that love was, you, I trust you. That Let's was try it. That was your heart telling you, just do it. Fuck it if he knows how to do it anyways. Yeah. This sounds like fun. Yeah, so then uh, I bought it, I started using it and then like, I wasn't really interested at first. I kind of was like, it was like this like fake idea, like, oh, I'm going to do this and then I got it and then like, I didn't really practice at first and he was like you're the most unexcited dj i've seen in my life like he's like i'm trying to teach you how to do this and you're not really like paying attention and i was like eh, whatever i just thought it'd be cool and then at some point it was like my 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 kids and everybody would go to bed at night and then i would just sit up like practicing by myself like it was just like a i was like oh shit like it's starting to click like it's starting to be fun and then the funniest thing is it wasn't until a an actual live event that I was DJing where like I really understood how to beat match and start doing a lot of like simple basic elements like instead of things you should have learned how to do by yourself first I kind of like learned it live like I was always just kind of like hmm. fuck it I gotta go do this event I'm like gonna trial like trial by fire yeah <clears throat> which is really not how you should do anything you should like no you should tell somebody like hey I disagree <laughs> that's the only way to learn in my I think opinion. that's the best way to learn under pressure it was uh, yeah maybe I don't know all I know is I was like oh shit I can kind of know how to DJ and this was like you know 11 12 years ago and then everything just was clicking like there was no like oh i had some plan there was no like oh uh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna like get the most google analytic like clicks i'm gonna like market myself like it was literally the most organic like word of mouth thing everybody just kept booking me and now you're like the dj for redding california the dj for redding california so the next thing is to be the next city i don't know what city it is but the next one you know willows (laughs) (laughs) why is willows your go-to city are you from Willis? No. Where are you from? I'm from here. here. Oh, why was we're the Willis boys? <laughs> <laughs> that that won't make sense, right? The now. podcast gets twenty thousand views and it's twenty thousand people from Willis. Willis. They're like, yeah, yeah. one shout out Willis. <laughs> they fucking know us already. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I was like, hold on, you got to be from Willis or something to say that. <laughs> no, we're just That's the Willis a boys. Long story. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, Anderson, California, I'm coming for you. All your bars. Oh yeah. All your clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the firehouse. The Tri City area. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that, that was how that pretty much worked out. Right on, man. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. just kind of built from there. That's what's up, dude. Yeah. Um, 
what what is your favorite like type of event to DJ? So this is going to sound very, very generic, very cliched. I like to play anything that people dance to. It sounds so cheesy and dorky and like, oh, everybody, every DJ says that. But like, if I go to a fucking country bar and I play, because I, I actually do like a lot of country now. Like, I used to fucking hate country. I would be like, because I do a lot of weddings, because weddings are really good money. And people would be like, oh, come do my wedding. We want a lot of country. And I'd be like, um... I don't know any country. I, 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 no, I got like one playlist from another wedding of close friends who gave me a bunch of country music. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll play that same music for your wedding. Sure. And then it literally organically, like I keep using that word, it just grew on me. I was like, I kind of like this song. Like, I kind of like it. And then eventually I'm like, I'll literally play country songs and be like, yeah, this is fucking sick. And it's like, <laughs> it's so weird, but. Dude, I love country, and I didn't for a long time, and the same way, it just kind of grew on me, and actually, the new Morgan Wallen album, I don't know if you've listened to it, but it just came out like a week or two ago. The What's the song, the the Liquor Talk one? That one is amazing. Uh, dude, I've listened to that album probably like six times in the past like two days. I and, just found it like... And somebody uh, mashed it up with Great. the Office opening music, and it's amazing. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah. Okay. This is the part where you paste it in. The, you'll find it, find it, paste it in. It's literally the you know dun 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 the piano opening scene, yeah. The, mixed the, with that's not nice, she let the liquor talk <laughs> that song. It's uh, that if there wasn't copyright issues, I'd say Mike pull that up, but uh, pull it up on just the pull it up in your imagination. It's a fucking professional it's, podcast. It's, pull it's up playing right, right here. <laughs> um, we'll play the music video without the lyrics. Yeah, but so honestly, like it reached a point where I didn't care what I was playing. Cause obviously at first I was like, I love hip hop. I love hip hop. Um, I got really into like house music, electronic music. And I was like, I only like house and electronic music. And then once I kind of like accepted, I actually just like DJing for getting a reaction out of people. So it'd be like, I'm playing the country night, all country music. If everybody's dancing and like spitting each other and having a good fucking time, I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, this is, even if it's like, let's say I play a country song I don't like. If everybody's like dancing, swinging around to it, I'm like, this is fun. You enjoy being a good DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I did a reggae night and I was like the token white kid at a <laughs> reggae night. <laughs> at, um, it was in Chico. Uh, damn it, what's the name of it? Lost on Main. That's the name of it. Lost on Main in Chico. And I DJed a, a reggae night and like all my friends from high school that were living in Chico for college at the time, because this was like right when it started, came out and supported me. And it was like a full on, like legitimate, like actual reggae night. And then it's like white boy from Redding, California. And like, I knew like a decent amount of reggae, but it's like, it doesn't matter. Then in the day, it's like, if I'm playing music that I'm getting a reaction out of from the people that are listening to it, then I'm like, this is fun. This is sick. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a su successful yeah. night. Yeah. So how do you go about finding new music? Like, I know for me, each week on, like, Friday or whatever, I just got through, like, the Apple's new music and the stuff that I like to listen to. There's, yeah, but, there's no, like, what's the coolest way or what's the exact way or how no, should how you do, do this do or it? this. Yeah. I, so I will, so I have a 15-year-old son. Okay. So my 15-year-old son thinks I'm the biggest fucking dork on the planet. <laughs> and he will, like, show me some new stuff. I just take inspiration from everywhere. I'd be like, I'll listen to things. He tells me, like, yo, the, this rapper's cool. This rapper's cool. Like, you need to know about this rapper. And then um, my record pools I use, I use, like, B uh, BPM, Supreme, DJ City, uh, Club Killers, um, Franchise Record Pool. I have, like, four or five oh, of them that I use. There's websites that, like, mm -hmm. find new music for you? Yeah, so there's websites where basically, I don't know, it's like a loophole. So basically the website, they what they do is they, I don't even know if it's a loophole or if it's like a legal thing or I don't even know how it works. Um, but they basically have like the newest releases that week and you just oh, like okay. scroll through it and you can see. But for me, the biggest thing I do is I, I do two things. I use Sirius FM, so I'll listen to um, Channel 51, which is BPM Radio, 52 is Diplo Revolution, 44 is Hip Hop Nation, 45 is Shade 45, and those play, like, all the newest hip hop and, mm -hmm. um, like, house and, you know, electronic music, and then I just listen to whatever they're playing on there, mm -hmm. and then if it's something's good, I just literally, it's so fucking cheese dick, I just shazam it, <laughs> nice. I just go, I'll be driving, like, 
the kids are yelling back, shut, shut the fuck up, I'm trying to shoot Shazam's song. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking work. <laughs> I don't know what song this is. Yeah, I'll, so I'll just like Shazam a song like when I'm driving. Like it's seriously, I don't text and drive. That's not true. I don't yeah, ever a, text and drive. That's against that's the law. That's a hands-free thing. Hands-free, it's a... Uh, voice voice to chat command yeah. thing. I recognition system. And, uh, but no, I'll seriously Shazam a song, like, you know, just because. Like, I'll be like, oh, I like this, I'll Shazam it. Um, and Instagram. Like, Instagram, a lot of the different people you can follow, like, a lot of DJs, too, will post, like, their top five favorite, like, songs of the week, right? Oh, cool. So then I'll just be like, um, oh, like, I'll screenshot it. I'll, like, literally anything I can do. Like, if somebody's like, these are my top five favorite releases of the week. And if they have snippets of the songs, like, I'll hear it. And if I'm like, I like it, I'll do it. One thing I definitely don't do, a lot of DJs do that I don't do. Like, I literally want to play a song if I don't like it. Oh, yeah. Like, seriously. Like, if somebody's like, like, well, let me back up. If you're a bride or a groom and you're like, I'm hiring you to DJ my wedding. I want to hear everything I want to hear. I'm going to play whatever you yeah, want. That's different. I'm going to play whatever you want. But if it's like... If it's like, oh, you have free reign, it's open format at a at a bar or a club to play whatever you want, I literally will not play a song I don't like. Like, I don't care if, like, 100 people are like, play this. Oh, okay, well, if everybody's chanting a song, I lied. I would play it. But, like, <laughs> but, like I'm never going to just, like, openly, freely play, like, some song I don't don't like just because it's popular yeah just yeah and, and that's not to be like oh it's not because like it's popular like i only play like you know the underground i only play songs before they're cool like no like <laughs> if you? yeah yeah no <laughs> she has some okay songs She's got some bangers, dude. She's, she know, does bangers. she does but there is there is um certain songs or artists and i'm like i don't really play like very hot take i don't really care for little baby i do not oh, like a good. lot of his music i think they're he's whining in a lot of his songs I don't care for it. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, oh, you know, like, like I literally have been yelled at by family members for saying that. He's got, like, bangers, though. <laughs> no, he I know he does. Songs, like, but he I has really good features you. on songs that I like. That's but, like, true. That. That's the only ones a lot that I've of really songs, I'm like, him. I just personally don't like it and I won't play it. And I know that other DJs will play it. So it's like, it's, not like, it. it's not like they're never going to hear it or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so... So that's that's on your list, you know. You have like a like a roster of like who's not invited, and Lil Baby is not invited to the DJ set. Oh no, he's funny as fuck. He's weird as fuck. I would I would party with Lil Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we're partying with somebody, hanging out with somebody, and liking their music or liking, you know what I mean? Those are all totally separate things. Like, who else yeah. let you play though? Like, okay, let me think. You mean like somebody like obviously there's a lot of people I don't play, but like that people that like, like or that's or like that, pretty like, popular. Yeah. yeah. Um. Hot good question. Right good question. Good question. Let me think. I got to cross my arms for this one. This is the part where you play Jeopardy music. Um, uh, it will happen. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> An artist that's popular that I don't really play. I actually, okay, and this is for no reason because I actually like a lot of his songs. Just as a DJ, I don't feel like a lot of them fit into my sets, is uh, Future. I don't really play a lot of Future songs. Okay. And Future is sick. Like, a lot of people love Future and in other places of the country. Like, Future goes off, but just... In Reading, like, trap music, like, hip-hop is not really, like, what people listen to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like, younger kids and people, yeah, like, sure, they do, but, like, the people that are going out to the bars and the clubs yep. here are not listening to, like, like you know, the, like, that 65, 70 BPM feature stuff, but... I'm not a huge feature fan. I definitely listen to his albums or whatever, but not the biggest fan. I would agree with that. Yeah, I've never actually, like, thought about that in DJing, because, like, obviously I've never done it. But, like, the amount of music that you, like, actually have to go through and how active you have to be to find, like, the new top hits to, like, stay relevant yeah. for, like, your crowds and stuff like that. I've never, like, thought about that. Yeah, I was curious because it, I go through a lot of music each week because I work outside and always have my headphones in, like, eight. What do you do for work? Construction. Okay, and yeah, I did, so I did landscaping for, like... Well, I did con I did landscaping for like seven, eight years, and then I did construction for two, and that's what I did too. Same. Like I always yeah. had headphones in, and I was like, Pandora, Spotify, like, what are you gonna put on today? Listen to, and then that's how I used to like. Yeah. But back then, that was like, back in the day, all I listened to was like underground hip hop. Same. Like that's it. It was like, yeah. it was like, what are the big labels? It was like Rhyme Sayers and uh, what are the other big underground hip hop labels that they have out? Strange. Strange Famous? Strange Music. Strange Music. 
Um, oh, uh, uh, Tech Nine. Tech Nine, yeah, 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 Tech Nine's label. He's like, yeah, one oh, of the biggest underground. You want to talk about some crazy yeah. shit right now on this podcast? Yeah, talk about it. Do you guys know that fucking Kendrick Lamar played in Reading? What? What? Kendrick Lamar played in Reading, California what? at the Civic Center. What? Like, forever ago, because him and him and Tech Nine are uh, uncle and nephew, right? There's what? some weird connection there. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what? why they have that song, that f- fragile song. That fragile. Yeah, like, that's like a hella good song. I like it's that a hella song. good song. Yeah. It's very not commercial at all, but it's an amazing song. So the reason they have that song is because they're related. And I went to the concert. My friends, these chicks that went with us, were all dressed up like all fucking like the whole uh, this t- the whole cloud. tech nine thing. Yeah, no, the, he wasn't the, full like yeah, ICP yeah. yet, right? But <clears throat> but Kendrick Lamar played in Reading as K Dot. That was his old alias, K Dot. He played as K Dot in Reading. In, in Redding, California. California, K-Dot, like in... I do remember him being K-Dot, but I don't in, remember him And, like, for, but, but, like, how would you, it's like, it's like saying, oh, you should have bought Bitcoin back in 2006. Like, who the fuck would have known to buy Bitcoin in 2006? I it's like, it who would have known, who would have known K-Dot was, I like, going to be a huge rapper <laughs> performing, was, performing in Redding, California. Uh, I don't know what year Dude. it is. I'll have to look it up and find it, but... Mike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he'll get back to us on that one. Yep. Did you go to it? Yeah, I went to it. It was, uh, and I don't remember anything he did or whatever. Like, I have no idea. I just know that eventually it was like, because of that song, I was uh, like, oh shit, like that was that. And I don't know how I put it together. But yeah, Kendrick Lamar played in Redding, California at one point of his like career. But before Kendrick Lamar, he was just Before K-Dot. he was selling out arenas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, damn. That's actually crazy. I had no idea. I know that Tech 9 does like a lot of like stuff like that. You know, like he... He, I, we'll be in Reading or whatever. Yeah, like occasionally. I, I he's been here a few times. Yeah, yeah he's a couple been here at least, times. I think twice. He goes to Chico like once every couple of years. There's a few people that come through here. Now he does the freaking around. ICP Clown Festival thing. Does he really? What? Yes, he's like he I'm he is envious of him. ICP. Well, he's I I've heard so many different things. Like he started with ICP and like he used to do music with ICP back like in the day, like after he like rapped with Tupac and before he became. I, I know Wait, almost nothing. Wait, he rapped with Tupac? Nine. I didn't know this. Yeah, part. he has a song with Tupac. Wait, Tech Nine and Tupac have a song. Yes, there. bro. He says it in his so- uh, one of his newer songs. He's like, I can't oh, dude, corroborate. Pull this the, uh, I'm gonna pull this up right now, bro. Yeah. Let's pull it up. We pull got up. Phones. We got yeah. Phones. Thank you. you yeah, I, I'm gonna put this on the on the screen for you guys. Tech. I I didn't believe this. He said it in a song, and I was like. No, he didn't. What? And then I looked it up, and it was real. You went and straight then, to Snopes.com. You and- said Snopes.com. <laughs> Did Tech Nine have a song with Tupac? No, bro. I looked at the comments, and they're like, "Not everybody here just because two, uh, Tech Nine said so in a song that he rapped with Tupac." Look at this shit, bro. Back with his ap- afro. Uh, I don't- okay. This is okay. It was- I was about to say, you see, know, look, with look AI, comment, nothing, bro. you can't believe anything you see on the internet. 12 years ago. Okay, 12 years ago, you're right. Look at the top. <laughs> All right, it's confirmed. Nice. It's been confirmed, confirmed. Confirm. <laughs> True. Crazy, it's a good song, too. <laughs> they have a music video, too, too. What? And, like, official? I don't know. But he has his afro I don't know, I didn't, everything. I didn't check his <laughs> Was it in parentheses and capital letters to say official? God damn it. Like, I dude, didn't pay attention to that. I was just facts. so, like, amazed that it actually happened. I was like... How old is Tech Nine? How long has Tech Nine been in music? What the, the fuck? The real question is, how old is AI? Ooh, ooh! I never thought about that. Like, how long? Me, yeah, how long? How long have we been being conceived and played? Yeah, and you know, maybe we've uh, had the Tupac hologram for quite a while. Maybe that song isn't actually a real. Maybe thing. Tupac has always been a hologram. <laughs> this is. I actually did not think I'd be thinking about something so hard right now. I was like. What if, yeah, what if AI's been around since, like, <laughs> the 80s, before I was born? It was just, like... The CIA conspiracy. Well, you know the government has, like, in the military has so much technology and information that we don't have access to. Like, we're so far behind the military. I always used to maybe. think that, but then I was in the military, and I'm like, these guys don't have anything. Like, yeah, you this think is that they're fucking... dumb, but, like, that's just the bottom line. They're not going to tell everybody about the cool shit that they got. Right. They're so, okay, we'll tell everybody... In a... Uh, on you know on the internet in America, but nobody else in the world they'll never hear about it. Like they won't see it on the internet in other places. It's just only us in America. Well, they're hella good at controlling the internet. I mean, just look at like everything that we are able to be spoon fed when we look up shit on the internet. You know, like when you search something, 
it's always coming up with like not like the truth. It comes up with like it, side answers. It seems like almost the truth, but not really. It's like not a all lie. there. <laughs> the craziest thing is when you get shadow banned. Like on Instagram, if you get shadow banned, um, if you post, if you're shadow banned, and I go to try to free post something that you posted, it will not let me do it. I went to so I post like a lot of stuff from TikTok that's kind of controversial because like I like to open up people's eyes, right? And I was at a show and I tried to go live and it was like. This talk, this this uh, Instagram has been flagged for uh, potentially blah 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 activity. You're not allowed to go live. It's like, what the fuck? From an Instagram live? That's weird. Yeah, because like my account had been shadow banned. I was getting trouble for uh, how did you get shadow? Copyright, copyright Posting music. It's stuff. always like this music's copyrighted. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, they're good. They're, they're, they're fucking good. What person is sitting at the computer 24 7 that knows what music I'm playing? I shouldn't be playing. They have a it's robot. AI. No, it's know, AI. I know it's a bro. robot. I know it's a robot, but I'm always like, I'm always like, damn, somebody's hella fast on the computer. They're just like, they're mad quick. Uh, yeah, fucking robots. Robots, dude. What do you think about like all this chat G- GPT stuff? Dude, it's weird. It's weird because, like, fuck, like, probably. Five years ago, it was so bad. It'd be like, it was it was somebody who got a computer to put in the algorithm of some one person, whether it's uh, fucking Tom Hanks, George Bush, it doesn't matter, saying you know that word that uh-huh. many times in a row, like saying it like, you know, they just took the words and chopped chopped it up and copy and pasted it. Yeah. And now it's like so smooth and perfect. It's like you don't even know if it's fake or not. Like, dude, what's going to happen with the court system when somebody's like, I have, like, uh, video evidence, I have video evidence <laughs> with yeah. audio. Inconclusive. Inconclusive that matches this. And they're like, oh, well, actually, this person so-and-so is proven to be at this point with, like, 100 witnesses. Like, they give, a, like, a keynote speech at an mm-hmm. event, and now they're trying to be framed for murder. Like, it's going to really mess and up a lot of things. They're going to make us get chips. So that they can tell which one's the real us. What kind of chips? What's your favorite chips? Uh, barbecue Lay's. <laughs> oh, I mean, those are okay. What's yours? No, actually, salt and vinegar Lay's. Like Probably it. those, like, uh, pepperoncini flavored uh, kettle chips. Those I feel like good. I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you buy them on holiday? Yeah. That's so weird. I know exactly what <laughs> random ass chips you're talking salt about. Salt and vinegar ones. <laughs> yeah, I already know exactly. What, I don't know what brand they are, but I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's like the matte colored bag. Yeah. Doritos. Blue chips, the blue ones. Cool really range. old classic. Yeah. Old classic, dude. Yeah. I remember when those first chips first came out. That was mind-blowing to me. I was like, flavored chips? It tastes like ranch. Yeah, what the fuck? I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, only had and then they were like, wait a second. Boom, nacho flavor. And you're like, wow, how did they just one-up that? Magnificent, wonderful. Wow, it's magic. <laughs> so in my most like cultured experience in life, I went to Europe for a week. Wow. And the flavors of chips are... So every not not even just chips. The flavors of everything are so off the wall. They had um, you mean biscuits? Yeah, biscuits. They had Pringles that were Ketchup. Texas, uh, Texas barbecue. That's it. That sounds amazing. I just they were called Texas barbecue. <laughs> They're just like everybody over there is so stupid, right? They don't. Well, not stupid, but they don't know anything about America. Cut so the part like, out. Yeah, Texas barbecue. People know the country. Europeans smart are too. idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that's not in America, dumb. Okay, here's the funniest part. For me, my experience there, like I literally spent seven days there, and I were was running. Dumb? I was running out of money, and I. I had lost my wallet and my phone or got a stolen or I don't know what happened. Oh, and I was like on my last amount of dollars and the cab drive to the airport was like, I was like, I'm going to give you like a $50 tip for like literally what would be worth maybe a $10 tip. And he literally went like spit next to like his face. and was like, America money, no good. It's no good. And I was like, dude, I'm going to give you a $50 tip. Like go fucking like exchange it. For the dollar is king. It was so, it was so weird. And then the most ironic part of the whole thing was I went into so many different stores. The most heard song in uh, Barcelona, Spain is Sweet Home Alabama. That's not even a joke. And my cab ride, and my cab ride in a new department store, and one other spot, I heard it. What? And everything they're playing is, is music from America. I heard, I heard No Doubt. I heard a ton of No Doubt. I don't know, like grunge, like chick grunge, like pop stuff is still sick there. Um, 
That's it, pretty interesting. It was so weird. The, amount of, the music that I heard there was so weird. I was like, I would expect it to be kind of like, you know, like Top 40 America or something, yeah. just because that's whatever is the most popular here. And then um, Sweet Home Alabama was the most yeah. heard song there that I heard. Wow. Well, it's a masterpiece of a song, so. I, I mean, I can see that because <laughs> most – like movies are western films too or mm-hmm. a lot of places the west the western, western culture like inspires so much around the whole world oh yeah hip hop hip hop hollywood mm-hmm. like we run everything like, hollywood and now bollywood don't forget about bollywood they're in the up and up are they honestly their, their movies original. are just absolutely crazy it, it's crazy Wait, because bollywood, uh, bollywood? Indian? indian hollywood yeah oh uh, this is part of the podcast i said i'm like yeah yeah i just agree with it but i was like no, I actually did you know what it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard, well, I've heard it. Okay, I'm not gotcha. Say, be like, oh, I've never heard it. Gotcha. So Netflix actually just like did some deal with Bollywood, and now like ninety percent of their movies are on Netflix. You should go watch them. They're uh, they're not rewatch worthy. You probably only get through like a little bit, but is some everything of the... like uh, subtitles or dubbed or what? Uh, or are they in English? Some of them are in English. Some of them are dubbed. Yeah, some of them are in different languages. Like huh. it, it's it's crazy. It's wild. They're like superhero movies where like they'll like be flying through the air at each other, and then one will throw a car at the other. But it's all live action, and it's just like so blown out of proportion and like so exaggerated. It's just hilarious. Okay, hmm. noted. Yeah. Speaking of all that, noted. I feel like bringing this full circle, I feel like AI could make the dubs better. Like, they should make the voices, like, match in English. That's actually a really good point. Oh, wow. Because I feel like with, there's still a lot of shitty dubs. I That stops me from watching a lot of really good shows. Yeah, because there's some shows that are just in different languages. I don't know if you've I'd seen rather it. just watch it. I'd, I'd rather it just be in subtitles than a shitty dub. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, sub, yeah I always watch it like, subbed. Don't try to play me like I'm an idiot. Like, I know you sound like shit. Just give me the subtitle. <laughs> like, yeah. make it easy on all of us. And then, so, and then the dubs... When they sound like they're like a whole different person in a different room. Yeah, they're, like, you they can tell it's up. like recorded. They're like, it's so terrible. Oh my god! Like, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Sorry. What's up, Mike? Hey, Mike. Hey. Where the boys at? What's up? Mike and the boys. <laughs> Dirty Mike and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you heard about what's going on in France right now? There's so the no. French <laughs> Revolution. Um, I've seen it like on TikTok. Instagram or yeah, TikTok or Facebook. Not it's not on, on Instagram. It's not. No, you can't see any of it on Instagram. Like it gets taken down instantly. It's like, it, so is that real? Yeah. No. Oh, what? Yeah, if you look up France on Instagram, you see just like nice pictures of France and like just like regular Anything ass pictures with, uh, of France. With this, I mean, I know it's happening. But I, if, I forget. I actually don't know why. I know it's happening. So now. it's because uh, Parliament or something. Is that yeah, they were Parliament? doing something with their wages. I can't remember. That's what they said. Stealing them. Yeah, right. That's what they Packing said. Them. They were taking away their pensions or something like that. Oh. Okay. There. Yeah. That and like something I'd get pissed about. And but but now for some reason, uh, the French like uh, rioters, they're going to Black Rock's doorstep and like rioting at Black Rock, and like. Uh, like th- throwing shit at their doors and like like protesting outside of their doors and shit like that, which yeah, is very crazy. suspicious. Does somebody have a song about that? Go check it out now. Hand over fist on YouTube. <clears throat> I definitely predicted this. Fuck Balenciaga. Yes, what yeah. he said. <laughs> Co-sign. But Officially. but it's also very convenient that this is all happening right now, right? And apparently they're going to BlackRock for whatever reason, and the Supreme Court is tr- or not the Supreme Court, but they're passing a bill that not only bans TikTok in America, but any uh like website or app or service that has over a million users they're allowed they're going to be allowed to go through all the messages between those people activate any cameras of people that are still logged into that microphones do all that shit all the shit they already do but so do it the legally in Europe? no here here America wait that's been happening since like 2000 and but but they're trying to like make it like open so they can openly do it and use it as like probably like evidence against people and like cases I feel like that's been like happening that. since 2001 or wait I don't know about 
like being upheld in court, but like yeah, it, there was like, that, there was like a whole joke yeah. back in the day. It was like, oh, your Samsung TV is listening, and it was like, no, your fucking Samsung TV was actually like mm-hmm. listening to mm-hmm. you, like and but they didn't and use it for Alexa. They did, but they didn't use it for like court purposes. They use it for marketing. So exactly. they'd be like, it would literally scan your room. So if you shot it this way, it would see Liquid Death. It'd see my van shoes. Um, I don't know what boots you're wearing. What are you wearing? Uh, low, uh, Lowe's. Like the department store or the construction <laughs> store? Loa. Loa. The it would literally <laughs> it'd see the Canon thing, and it would literally read everything, and then it would target those ads to you. Like since 2001, that's been a thing. So also, how long has that informa- or that technology been around? See, you were saying. Like before 2001, I don't know. Right? That's what I'm saying. Hidden. AI invented it in the 80s to monitor all of the people that it's under its control. Yeah. Next level in the simulation unlocked. Damn. We're about to have robots like break down the door right now. And then the dome above the flat earth is going to shatter. <laughs> I believe a lot of conspiracies. I don't believe Earth is flat, though. I, no, you're right. It's I don't like believe a that one. It's kind of like a bubble. It's not. Like, <laughs> it's it's really, not completely flat. It's really easy to believe. Like the Earth just keeps slightly turning. Like it's not that far fetched to think that. It's crazy that like people yeah. have never been through school to understand why you can see that light bends with gravity and like refraction because that's like their biggest argument with the flat earth is like oh you can see up to like that ship should be like gone over the horizon line but in reality like light bends so you see the curve through the curve of the earth like it's flat but in reality the earth is pretty much flat it just is like a small like dome shape like a like bubble wrap like a frisbee am i and stuck then... in the middle of a flat earth <laughs> Debate. Wait, oh, you're here still. <laughs> oh, hey, Bucky, back to Bucky. <laughs> oh, fuck this guy. He's here. Okay. Uh, what else are you into, man? Are we still filming? Is this still going? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, what else am I into? Yeah, like what other like hobbies or like? Because DJ, you already you're... know what I'm into. I play Apex with. Well, you. they Stop. don't know yeah, what you're. They don't know. Stop. <laughs> I play. I'm a one person video game type of person. Like, I played. For the most part, like I played Halo forever. Uh, I played uh, a little bit of Call of Duty. I was into the older ones. The new ones suck, all of them. Yeah, terrible. And then uh, played Destiny forever. And then uh, Apex. I've just been on Apex forever. So I love gaming. Um, uh, what else am I into? I see you at the gym and like you snowboard, right? <laughs> I haven't been up once this season and I'm going to DJ. This Saturday, for the first time ever being at the ski park this season. Oh, nice! Yeah, you're gonna DJ yeah. up in Manchester? Yeah, yeah for the the skim the, the skim uh, pond competition thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah. Uh, eleven to eleven a.m. to two p.m. this Saturday in Manchester. Be ski there. Park. This probably won't. Oh yeah, probably last, probably last Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. Or we'll a couple Saturdays last ago. Last Saturday, but go. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming out a week after we uh, aired this. Um, yeah, no, I like gaming. Gaming just, like, I have ADD. It just takes my brain off of, like, obsessing over everything. It just gives me something to focus on for that amount of time. Um, I completely feel you there. That's I'm the same way. The gym. I used to be in love with the gym. I used to be in love with, like, being fit. But, like, for me, it's more like a mental health thing at this point. I'm like, mm-hmm. I know the effects of how good it is on your mental health to work out, like the endorphins you get from working out. And obviously, like... I'm not, like, trying to be, like, the fucking rock, but, like, I also don't want to be just a fucking lard. So, like, I'm, like, (laughs) that's my motivation. But, like, I don't really know if I love going to the gym. Like, a lot of times I go there, I'm, like, I don't want to fucking be here. I don't want to be here, like. Hey, dude, me too. Like, I'm 34. There's, like, there's, like, 34 22-year-old kids in here that are, like, fucking (laughs) ripped out of their mind. They're not even trying. They're just, like, flicks in the mirror. They're, like, oh, shit. And their fucking bicep popped up. Well, fuck. Testosterone really helps. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never juiced either. I've never done it. Like, I know a lot of people do. It like, helps. What, uh, what, what is the chemical word for juicing? What is it? Uh, what? Isn't there like a chemical letters? Uh, nothing. Well, there really? there's different kinds of like steroids and stuff, like HDH and stuff. Yeah, yeah, or whatever it is. I've never done it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, working out is just good for your for your mental health. Yeah. Um, I and love movies. I love movies. I'm actually, okay, I'm a movie buff. No. Okay. I'm a movie buff. Like, now we're talking. I literally know, like, random shit about random movies. I know outtakes. I know, like, the improvised, like, uh, ad-lib scenes. I know, like... Favorite movie? Uh, the Dark Knight. 
Oh, that's a great oh, movie. Oh, okay. I could watch it a hundred times. Uh, so like, you you know all like the because there there was a while a while back there was this thing that came out. I guess they do it with a lot of videos like or, or movies. Uh, like all the things that are actually like wrong in the movie, like wrong or like you see like the cameraman or you see like one of the extras. Or oh, like that. you're talking or about or um, whatever. Yeah, that's what what the what is that called? It's called a. Uh, a blooper or Blo- whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like an outtake not, or yeah, a glitch yeah. or whatever they call it. God, it's, there, there's a word and it's right there. there. I don't know what it is. But... <laughs> I can't help you. I think it's a blooper. Like, it's when a movie doesn't have continuity. Like, there's a... I forget what action movie it is, but like, a guy falls off a roof and lands on like a convertible and smashes the whole windshield in the mm-hmm. next scene. It's the, like... It's car. totally it's, fine. It's the same car. No, no, it's the same car, but it's perfect. Oh. Because just yeah. in the producing and the editing and everything that happened the continuity got lost yeah. so it's a blooper it's like yeah that should be a egg. egg yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we'll just call them easter eggs easter egg. unintentional easter eggs well easter eggs <laughs> more like something purposely put there that as like a hidden yeah unintentional easter okay, eggs rotten easter eggs yeah right okay. yeah <laughs> i don't know if that's a new thing made up but it, that really made sense in my brain i was like <laughs> you're like yes that works <laughs> yeah cool i'll take it yeah like the chips you're like these <laughs> chips i was like do you shop at Holiday Market <laughs> on Placer? I was like, I know where that is. <laughs> I've been there too. I've, I've is that in as well. Redding, California? I'm getting those vibes. So tell us something about the Dark Knight that we don't know. About the Dark Knight, okay. Let's all Let's share see. weird movie facts. It doesn't have to weird, be weird movie facts. Yeah, yeah, um, in the Dark Knight. Let's see. In that movie specifically, the scene where he goes to blow up the hospital, mm-hmm. yeah, and he has the clicker, mm-hmm. and it doesn't work, and he goes, and he like turns around, like does it, and hits it, and then it blows up. Uh-huh. That was, that was that they really fucked up. The stone crew didn't blow up when it was supposed to. Wait, did they actually blow up a hospital? Well, I mean, I mean, were they blew up a that? fake hospital. Was it? <laughs> It was a children's hospital. They fucking children in there, It was a children's hospital. That's how they're getting away with this. So when they blew up a fake hospital, I didn't know either. (laughs) When they blew up that fake hospital, he stayed in character. Mike, can you check that real quick? Because it was supposed to go off, and it doesn't go off. And he he stays in character and, like, fucks with it and plays with it. And it's, like, those scenes that add to the movie because it gives his, like, his quirky weirdness of a person. And that was, like, a scene where it actually – didn't work out and he's just standing character he like, imagine he broke girl. character and then it exploded and they were like fuck we just got to build a whole new hospital no that's literally oh, that like the be... what is it that's like the <laughs> opening scene of tropic thunder <laughs> what, oh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> what did he say whatever he says booyah motherfucker <laughs> booyah and they blow up everything and it's like they did it too soon and the timing was off <laughs> yeah but that's what happened in real life in the movie but he stayed in character and he kept oh god that would be so the, much pressure he kept pressing like the lever to you know to get it to go off and it doesn't go off and he stays in character that's like the most obvious one i can think of in the dark knight um doesn't have to be the dark knight now hit me with something yeah else. a random crazy movie fact so Wait, another switch from the Dark Knight trilogy? Yeah. yeah. Any movie? What's the craziest? It can be. Whatever you want. The craziest movie fact I know, not the Dark Knight. Let me think. Um, oh, funny one. This is this one's kind of getting popular right now, so maybe it's not that whatever. In Billy Madison, when Adam Sandler was throwing dodgeballs at the kids and hitting them, mm-hmm. that was real. <clears throat> Full power. That was real. And the parents got pissed. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? And they're like, yeah, it's said in the contract, this is not going to be, like, a stunted, like, scene. Like, they're going to get hit with dodgeballs. And they were all crying, and it was all real. That's awesome. <laughs> dude, you're going to hell, dude. You're laughing on a podcast. That's awesome, dude. About kids getting hurt. I love watching kids get hurt. What could I, uh, what I, mean, I say? I cracked a smile when <laughs> I said was, children's hospital. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was for sure a real, a real thing that happened. Totally see Adam Sandler... Doing that kind of shit. Um, Lord of the Rings and Lord of the Rings that made it into the movie and never got edited out. There's a scene where where the, one of the works is like, is like, is like, laid out like totally dead, and then they're talking on this side, you know, like uh-huh. they're filming over here, and it stays in, in the screen, and he goes, and he literally just nonchalantly like rolls over like this, and he's like, he's like. <laughs> Literally, what? you can watch it. I think it's a, what's the second one? Whatever the second one the, is. The, the the two towers. The two towers. Oh wait. He literally rolls over. The twin towers. <laughs> whoa! whoa, whoa. Wait, what? Shut the... He rolls over and too soon. Oh. And, Sorry. And like literally years. rolls over and like puts his arm his arm up to like stare at them. 
during like the, <laughs> their scene because he wanted to watch it. Instead of being like, yo, I'm getting paid a hundred bucks. I'm just going to lay here and pretend to be dead. He was like, nah, I'm watching this shit. I don't care. He's like, yo, I'm only getting paid a hundred bucks. I'm going to fucking I'm watch this, this movie. I've been here for 10 hours. He's like, we've been taking this same scene for like 50 minutes. Fuck, I died uh, first. Dude, so everything with, so I love, I love the Dark Knight because of Christopher Nolan, who's the director, right? Yeah. And all of his movies, he uses practical effects. Everything's practical. So like. Inception, when they have that scene where they're fighting in the hallway and it's spinning because uh-huh. it's a dream, that was a real set created. Oh, uh, that's oh, super yeah. cool. They're actually fighting up and down. That. That's not like like that's the set not is CGI. spinning. Yeah, they yes. had a whole room like dude in in, a, in, uh, uh, in Tenet in the movie cool. Tenet when they crashed a 747 into a building to set off the alarms. That's a real 747. They crashed into a real building. In the new movie coming out, Oppenheimer. I hope somebody in the splices like the past like five minutes of this dude, together into something dude, just insane. Yeah. When the plane crashed into the twin towers. So when, so when, uh, in the new Oppenheimer movie that's coming out about the guy that created that the Manhattan Project. That so you know the movie facts bomb. about movies that aren't even oh, out yet. I'm so excited. Yeah. To watch that. When that movie comes out, they people will fucking fight me, and you can argue with the wall. I don't give a shit. They actually created a replica of an atomic bomb for the movie. People are like, they didn't create an atomic really? bomb to, wow. to detonate. They, he literally created a fucking atomic bomb and somehow got it passed and blew one up. He doesn't blow up a city with people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he literally blows up a real atomic bomb, like in a fucking desert somewhere for the movie. Like that's that, why they won't show France. That's really like I'm not saying it's a full size. Like nuke, like yeah, it's however just many, like some sort of whether it's even if it, I don't even know if it's a one percent of a hundred percent of a real ass nuke, right? But, but they had a big up, bomb. He literally blows up an actual. He had, he actually does a nuclear detonation for his newest movie, and that's why I'm like, that's what makes his movie sick. And I can't have thirty round mags. <laughs> nope, that's... and I can't have a tank. <laughs> ten, ma- ten round mags, <laughs> dude. Fuck, dude. But that it, is insane. Yeah. So. One thing that I recently found out that I about movies that I thought was pretty interesting, uh, the Paranormal acti- Activity series, the first one was like a home movie type deal, like an indie movie, and it is one of the highest grossing box office movies. Ever. I don't, I don't watch scary movies. Oh really? What I love scary movies. Are you scared I get, by them? I get scared <laughs> by scary movies. Dude. If you want to fight, I will <laughs> fucking square up with you. But dude, if I watch a scary movie. I will be scared as fuck in the dark. I don't care, dude. I'll be scared to get out and admit it right away. I'm like... You just run to your room when, when the movie's over. Yeah, so I deal. literally... I cannot do scary movies. I hate jump scares. I hate jump scares and not even scary movies. It pisses me off. And they're like... And somebody's like, oh! And the music goes... Dun! And it makes like a dramatic sound. I'll literally be like, fuck! I'm like, elbow the person next to me. And I'll be like, oh, sorry. Like, oh. Your wife's like, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> like, come here. Um, come here. No, I did hear that with... Uh, wait, you're talking about the... The first paranormal activity. The Blair Witch Project, right? Was that it? Or the, or are you, wait, is it called the paranormal yeah, activity? activity one? They're a series. Yeah, those were all, yeah, that was, that was insane. All those movies made, made a shit ton of money off it, of like no budget. Yeah, the, I think the, I don't want to quote it, but it was like under $50,000, I'm pretty sure. It was so Yeah, because they took a house, money. they recorded it with like a blue light camera, I and then. I want to say it was $10,000. I wouldn't be surprised. They had to buy the camera, probably. That's you probably all that they had to buy. Because they recorded it with their camera. Because it was one of those okay, movies I'll that was, right. like, behind the camera, right? Where they set up the camera. Yeah. yeah. That was... I can imagine how cheap those movies would be to make. What's your favorite genre of movie? <sighs> favorite genre? Um, probably... Honestly, I'm a fucking nerd. I like sci-fi. Sci-fi is good, bro. I do. I like sci-fi... I like thriller. I like I like dramas. I like okay. action, dude. I like everything. It's just like my DJing. It's like it sounds so cliched. Like, oh, as long as like people are dancing and entertained, it's the same thing. If I watch a Michael Bay movie and there's a fucking explosion, boom, over here, and they're like three words of dialogue, like, wow, what was that? Boom, another bomb goes off. I'll be like, yo, what? The? I don't know either. That was a crazy bomb. Did you hear those two bombs back to back? That was two explosions back to back. Got me good. That's seriously how I am with my DJing too. I'm like, if I'm entertained, if I go to a movie theater or I rent a movie and I watch it and I'm not like just sitting there like looking at the person next to me, if I'm looking at the screen and like I'm entertained, Intently, yeah. then it worked. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's the same with teaching. It's like if people are reacting, having a good time and dancing and going crazy in front of me and I have, I'm watching a TV screen and I'm 
glued to it, whatever it is, whatever that word is, like, you know, suck to it, entertain, lost in it, whatever it is, Mesmerized. it works for me. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a, you know, comedy, uh, thriller. Uh, no, no scary movies, though. No, um, <laughs> you've never, no, you, scary you've never seen a scary movie that you liked. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get made fun of so bad for this. Is, uh, is A Quiet Place considered a scary movie? What was that about? There's it, that was John it, Krasinski from it, The it Office. Was, it was the one where I think it's a thriller. It's more of a thriller. Oh wait, no, I would. It's with the aliens. It's it's wait, very it's, it's very off, like right? on that line. Yeah, they can't talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, okay. And so, they just shoot him with a gun at the end. Okay. It's like, <laughs> for, me, for me, that's my level of like, oh, I like scary movies because okay. it's very like. To me, that's like an extreme thriller. Like it's very I prefer, like the thriller, yeah, genre, or like a par- like a mind. Honestly, but, like, I don't want to. I don't want to sit down and watch like some gory ass movie. I, like I don't, I don't. It doesn't shock me. Gore. It doesn't shock me. Like I know what it looks like if something gets your head chopped off. Like yeah. You know, I yeah. was 13 years old with the internet at one point in my life. Yeah, like, I watched <laughs> best gore too. <yeah>. But I, <laughs> I don't need to like, and I don't want to watch anything where it's like, I'm literally gonna like be thinking about it when I'm like, I already have insomnia, like or whatever the like. I already have a shitty sleep schedule because of having, you know, four kids and DJing three nights a week. So, like, I don't need to be laying awake at bed at night with nothing to think about, being like, what about that movie that, like, was really weird? And for a second, I got really scared. You should think about that. And then you have the ones like Texas Chainsaw Massacre where they're like, and the killer was never caught. <laughs> and you're like, oh, damn. I, He's still in your bed. And then your neighbor is just, like, cleaning his chainsaw and just, like, at 10 at night. And you're, like, looking out your window like, oh, my God, he's here. When I was younger, I used Every time I'd watch a scary movie, I would have to watch, like, a kid's movie afterwards. So I would watch, like... Is that like, what you have to do? Or forget about it. Just to, like, cleanse my palate to go to bed, you know? Like, I would go to the that movies or whatever with my friends when I was, like, 15 or 16. And then I would watch, like, Despicable Me to go to bed. Like, while I was falling asleep, you know? It, just to, like, take my mind off of it. And I never thought about it. And now I love scary movies. As long as they're good, I don't like a whole lot of gore or anything. Most scary movies, I feel like though, aren't very good. Yeah, like they not. they don't really have like it has to have a good story. Like like that's that's how I am. If it has a good story, I like it. You know, like scary movies used to scare me a lot, but now that like I've been out in the world and like I'm like no. What, what, what was the movie with the girl with the hair? With oh, the TV. Coraline. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what? what? What was it? The Grunge. The Grunge. Okay, yes, that movie scared the shit out of me. <laughs> What? What is Coraline? Caroline or Coraline? Uh, Coraline. It's a, it's a super creepy Tim Burton movie. <laughs> okay, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I was like, yeah. They got like buttons for us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the buttons throw you off? <laughs> yeah. Was like, Those buttons, dude. <laughs> no go, bro. They weren't even, uh, they weren't even an even number of buttons. <laughs> holes on the buttons. There were five holes on the buttons. Oh, uh, that pissed way me off. off, dude. Who threads with five holes yeah, on a button? Like closure, though, on that paranormal activity... Fifteen thousand dollars to make the movie it grossed like two hundred million. Yeah, that's wild. That's sick. That's like, yeah, you can't really do that with anything else. Everything you have to be like, except for Blair Witch Project, 80, yeah. 90, 60 grand million dollar budget to gross like a hundred fifty, two hundred million dollar budget to make the amount of money like. I think that is like the thing about horror movies. I think it's like a good stepping so it's like rap music. Like you don't need much to make a horror movie. That's true. You can yeah. make a horror movie yeah. like in the wilderness near your house. There's an old cabin Life out there. Is scary enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, just like music or just like making a movie, it's like you could make the best song in the world, you can make the best movie in the world, but if you don't get it out at the right spot at the right time, it won't make a difference. Yeah. That's true. Like, you know, I mean, obviously things are way different with the platforms that are available today, but it's like, you could make the best movie on earth, and if you don't put it at the right film festivals in the right spots, it's never going to be seen. So it's like a tree falling in the woods, it doesn't make a sound. Yeah. Just like music. Like, you can make a great-ass song, and you could, you could think to yourself, like, dude, why is this song not being more popular than it should be? Like, I feel like this is a good song. And it's not just you. It's the fact that you're just, we're not doing something at the right spot at the right time, and it's literally like a lottery scratcher it's luck yeah you know like seriously it's luck yeah and i think that you but i also think that you can increase your odds of getting lucky quote unquote by doing it every single day for like as long as you can you know? that's true for that's, 10 years. How, that's how you get more followers and stuff yeah, but do it for 10 years dude you'll <clears throat> definitely get some i've always been like that's that's one thing that's always like kind of evaded me is like marketing my own music and like finding the right avenues because I've like tried like a hundred different ways and it seems like none of them fucking work. 
You know what I mean? It's like it feels like the the best thing is like the cheesiest stuff, which is the hardest stuff to do. Like, like go out and make like a video that's super fake on the streets. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, who's the white kid that looks like doesn't look like Logic? little baby? No. Oh, <laughs> the little baby rapper. The, 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 the white kid that sounds like little baby. Yeah, he's a. There's a white rapper that sounds exactly like little baby. Really? Like legitimately sounds like him. In his videos, I just saw him like literally yesterday. He goes up to people and he goes, "Yo, I'll give you a hundred bucks." If you tell me, you listen to my song, tell me if you like like it or pass, like or something to that extent. And most people, I think, were like, yeah, that's all right. Or some people were like, nah. But I'm like, who the fuck would walk up to a person at the gas station pumping the gas and be like, yo, I'm going to give you 100 bucks from making content. Like, I get it. It's cool. But it's like, who's really just going to walk up to somebody randomly and be like, I'm going to give you 100 bucks like, to listen to my song. Yeah, and he's like. This before before he does that he's like this is gonna go viral do you want to be in my video and then he gives him the hundred bucks and at the end he's like give me that back I, that bucks, <laughs> I gotta give that back I gotta give that to ten other people the crazy thing is the uh, authenticity of uh, Mr Beast's videos oh, is yeah. that they're actually authentic like yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it. Like, my kids, this is so embarrassing. I just found out who Mr. Beast was, like, within the last few years. Like, not even joking. Yeah. Not even joking. Honestly, probably same for me, though, too. And my kids were, or my daughter, who's 10 now, she was like, we were watching on TV, and I was like, I was literally like, holy shit, these are kind of fun to watch. I was like, these are good videos. Yeah. And then I found out that he, like, puts all this money back into his videos. He doesn't, he doesn't make any money. Like that thing he got in trouble for with like, everybody was like, oh, you're giving kids shoes in Africa? And then it's like, yeah. Like he wants to buy kids <laughs> shoes in Africa. Like, why is that making him a bad He's person? a philanthropist. Like yeah, 100% through like and through. One of the largest, I think he has the largest food bank in the United States. Yeah. yeah. He it. And he has like his burger places. So it's funny how like, you could think somebody like that one dude who's like, I'm the, I'm the white little baby rapper. And you're like, who is this? Like this kid is just stop. Cloud chasing. And then, yeah, yeah, And then you have somebody who's, like, kind of feels the same way. They're just doing so many random off-the-wall obscure videos and these challenges. And then all of a sudden you're, like, this guy's actually, like, legitimate. Like, he's actually, like, authentic. You know, he's also, like, the definition of perseverance. He's been making videos since middle school. And he only got popular in college when he counted to a million on, stri- on like, on a video. Wait, he counted a million out loud? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Bro. I think if I got a dollar for every time I counted a number, I couldn't do it. Uh, I don't think if, I could. What if you got $200 million for every one you counted? Because oh, yes. a few years later, that's where he's at now. Yeah. Like like I could do it. Million if somebody was like, you get $100 million for every second, I'd be like, 29, 30, fuck. All right, I'm done. Three. Oh, oh, what's the math? What's the math on that? I can't do math right now. Well, you would have to count all the way to a million to have gotten that. Oh, no. Yeah, that's that's now nuts. He's, now he's worth like. He said he wouldn't even sell his company for like. I can't imagine a billion dollars. I cannot I imagine counting to. Like every video that he does, like he's either giving away a million dollars, giving away a house, giving away a Lamborghini, like doing like, and like he built his own Squid Games. Well, the coolest thing like, about holy that shit. stuff that he gives away too is he makes sure that everything's paid like mm-hmm. fully. He pays all the taxes, the registration fees for the cars, like all the Insurance. property taxes, the insurance. He. Pays for everything. So and when he flies, and when he flies people out for his shows, he pays like for like their job or like their bills or whatever. Like if they're like a contestant or whatever. Yeah, like if they're like oh like contestant. whoever stays in the participant. Yeah, whoever stays in this circle gets this, and like some people are there for like a month. You know, he'll On pay all. Island. Yeah, he'll pay all their bills. Oh, yeah, or somebody you know? was like, you can't leave the circle for like thirty days. He's 30 done days. that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I watched he, a video about him. Uh, about how he gives away islands. What? And the he's like, fuck? yeah, dude, I can just go and like buy, I could buy like a really nice island for like 10 or $20 million, but, or I could just get one that's like kind of shitty, which I do all the time. I get them for like a million or less or whatever. And yeah, less than a million. He brings uh, sand, he like imports sand, <laughs> and, like, cleans the beaches and shit. And makes that's nice actually people. super cool. That's wild. Yeah, he like makes islands for people. That's crazy. Yeah, I've seen like some videos where he like, does buy an island and he'll have people like stay out there for like a week and like whoever wins gets the island. Yeah. He's done that a few times I think. One idea. I would sell my island immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the island. What's it worth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zillow.com. Yeah. Uh, 92 longitude, uh, 84 latitude. <laughs> What's my island <laughs> worth? Pin my island. <laughs> I could get a couple like 500k for that. Take me... Take me back to the days where I like the seas weren't controlled or owned by a, 
uh, country to where the island could just have its own set of laws and shit. It can if you have an AK-47 in the middle of Somalia. Yeah, the Coast Guard. <laughs> the pirates, Navy. Pirates. Yeah, oh, could be pirates. pirates. Oh, yeah, 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 Somalia. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah. That wasn't me taking shots at Somalia. Just don't do that for me. Donate to our boat. We're, yeah, we're going to get a boat now. We're becoming pirates. Yes, we are. All we'll continue us. the podcast. The broccoli boat. Arr. Arr. <laughs> we're coming for your broccoli. <laughs> Give me your vegetables. <laughs> so you got kids and shit? Uh, yep, I got four. Four kids. Four kids. Oldest? Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Damn. Uh, second oldest. Uh, no, ten. No, no. Wait. Third, I mean, uh, the, young, the, uh, the last youngest. oldest. Fourth. Fourth oldest. Second oldest. <sighs> you guys are confusing me. <laughs> my girlfriend has two daughters. I have a daughter that's ten, and my son's uh, fifteen. Yeah, so he's the one that would like show me music, and then he'd be like, "It doesn't matter though. Anything I show him, he's like, oh, that's dorky. You're a dork, Dad. <laughs> like you're old. Oh, you got like <laughs> the hottest, coolest dunks on your dork. <laughs> Those are dork. dunks aren't even cool anymore. Kids like, just dude, his friends' right? dads are wearing like the fucking the Nike Monarchs, you know, with the blue jeans, and then like I'm wearing like the sickest dunks you can buy, and he'll be like, dorky. He's just Nobody jealous, wears dunks. Dude. Nobody wears dunks. That's not even cool anymore. While that he's like at school, and you're the cool dad to everybody else, and to him, you're just like, oh no, 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 it's hundred percent that way. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how it feel if it was you know reverse, like growing up having a dad wearing like you know like the cool shit coming out or. You know, everybody's used to having a dorky dad, so I don't know. I guess I just broke that stereotype. I think that's just part of, like, growing up yeah. is, like, my dad's a dork. Like, no matter what, you know, that's just kind of a part of life. You go through that phase, and then when you get older, you don't really ever get over that phase, and your dad's just a dork forever. I don't know. Both? I don't know. My dad's are cool. Yeah. Like, are they cool? Well, reasonable teaching. <laughs> Not that dorky. <laughs> Like Patagonia dorky, like how, like what, what level of no, what are they? My dad, well, Kirkland, like, Doran Kirkland brand. He does, but that's only because he's like, he stays at home. I saw other kids wearing Kirkland. I thought it was cool. <laughs> he just doesn't care what he wears, I guess. But, it actually, I okay. As much as if this is super hypocritical, Shout out, dad. I, I think that thinking what you wear is cool is dorky, even though like I do wear like a lot of yeah. like. Not like I don't wear like designer brands, but like trending. I wear, like, I wear a lot of like trending like streetwear brands, but I wear because I love hip hop and it like it you know it like encapsulizes hip hop. But and you like, like it in my style, yeah. But like at the end of the day, like if you look at somebody and you're like, oh, they don't like have cool shit on. There's nothing cool about that person. <laughs> that is like the dorkiest thing, and I think a lot of people <laughs> yeah, really do that. Hella corny, bro. Yeah, we're like, oh, you're not dressed like you don't have like fucking uh, Doc Martin boots on and like some like you know, like super fancy, like, uh, you know, like boutique style, like denim jeans on. And like, you don't have a car harp and like some like fucking, you know, like everybody has like a style or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but it's like, at the end of the day, thinking there's some cool way to dress is just the dorkiest way of thinking. Especially if you live in Reading. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> don't get me wrong. There are dorky shirts and dorky things where you're like, I had somebody buy me a shirt that said Funkle, and I was like, <laughs> I can't wear that. <laughs> like, under, I can't be caught out like this. Funky uncle? <laughs> no, 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 it's, funky? I think I think it meant the fun uncle, oh. not funky uncle. Yeah, I actually, I'd rather wear it if it said funky, yeah. <laughs> but it said Funkle, and I was like, I bit my lower lip, and I was like, oh, I'm never wearing that. Like, that's never happening. Like, 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 oh, great! Under no circumstance, yeah. like. <laughs> Under no circumstance, if they're like, if you don't put a shirt on, you're being charged with pedophilia, you fucking pervert. There's kids out here. I'd be like, I'm not wearing the shirt. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, take I'm, me to jail, cut me up. I do, I'm not wearing a Funkel shirt. You're like, they're gonna have to put me on a list anyway for wearing yeah. Funkel. Yeah, yeah. That, that's more. <laughs> this is a lose lose, lose a officer. <laughs> this is a lose lose. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. You're not giving me any options here. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah, just put me in orange. Put me in orange. Yeah, I'll take the orange <laughs> over Funkel. <laughs> He, the jumpsuit says Funkle on the back. <laughs> Fuck. But they got me. They got me. And they got me. They're in on it. They were together. They got me squared. Fuck. Oh, man. 
Well, shit, it's been really great having you on the podcast, yeah, man. No, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah. Like we do, do we do like a proper handshake? What do you guys usually do after the show? I've never the time, done that before. Do we uh, do like a final cheers with our liquid deaths? Yeah, or? man, mine's yeah. empty, so. Okay, okay. okay. Wow. No, it's full. It's completely full, so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or no, wait, it's empty because we love it so much. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Wow. Wait, hold on. One more. They probably won't take our sponsorship away, but if they do, you're going to have to get us a new one. It's cool. He can just sponsor us. What? Oh, yeah. Sponsor. Sponsored by DJ Bucky Tungo. And sponsor me, Miller High Life. <laughs> I, oh, we're going for a sponsorship. Out. I really hope it works out. I hope that works out. I'm really pushing for it. I see that. Oh! Nice. And it's real. Yep. Suck that down. Nice. Uh, yeah. That was rough. Nice. <laughs> well, that's been, been another episode, episode of the Broccoli Pod. We're your hosts. I'm Capital J. I'm Augie Dupre. And this is DJ Bucky Dungun. We out. Peace.